everyone, and welcome to our show, DD Talks, the Art of Specialty Lenses. I'm your host, Dee Reyes. And today, I'm very honored to have one of my dear friends and colleagues, Luis Clafani, joining us today. Luis, tell us a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself to the group. Hi, Dee Dee. It's great to be here today. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you. And in um, commemoration of you with your beautiful purple color hair and blue hair, I thought I'd put a little gray in just, just for you. Okay. <laughs> Was totally planned. Um, so I've had the pleasure of working with you at Synergize, and I just want to let you know I've, you're, I, you're so exciting to watch. Um, you're an amazing consultant, and I really have a lot of respect for everything that you've been doing. So, so thank you. Um, I practiced at the University of Chicago for over 24 years, where I was the director of contact lens services and associate professor. And about three years ago, my journey uh, changed, and I am now vice president of professional affairs for Synergize. Um, but I also spend uh, most of my time seeing patients as well. I'm at a private practice called Solo Eye Care in Chicago, uh, working with, or I should say for, uh, some of my former externs uh, who I've known for years and who uh, have welcomed all my patients from University of Chicago over to the private practice. And I am still teaching at the Illinois College of Optometry, uh, where I'm in the cornea and contact lens, uh, specialty lens uh, fitting clinic. And, and one of the, the proudest women in optometry that I've seen uh, in many years, and I just adore you for that. So I do have a couple of questions for you. You know, one of the things that we try to do is is work in some other talents and kind of introduce some of your other talents to, um, to our audience and to other people as well. So we talk a little bit about optometry and, and contact lenses and specialty lens fitting, and then we kind of turn around and, and get to know you a little bit. So first of all, we'll start off with just a couple of questions. Okay. Um, I know you're very involved in hybrids and in the specialty lens market. So how do you feel hybrid lenses have impacted the specialty lens market? Well, thanks for asking that because, you know, hybrids, while it is a specialty lens, um, there are more than just special patients that fit into it. And what I mean by that is this category really lends itself to uh, so many more patients than those who have maybe irregular corneas. So it's truly for any patient who has any refractive error, astigmatism, presbyopia, um, or anyone who just really wants more fine-tuned vision uh, and wants more out of their contact lenses. And, you know, many doctors view this as a specialty lens or think that it's more challenging to fit. Um, and so they don't reach for it as often, or they only reach for it for those problem patients. And um, yes, they do work well for those problem patients, but they really shine for, again, patients who uh, just have some of these other disorders or refractive conditions. Um, and so you know, those who, um, you know, do fit it uh, truly see that there is a difference when they're fitting this lens and um, the patient appreciates the time and effort that the doctor puts into it. And, you know, it kind of takes the boredom out of fitting contact lenses. It makes, you know, a bigger, bigger population of patients uh, more challenging and exciting for us to fit. And we can really see those benefits. Um, not to say that soft lenses don't give benefits to patients or other modalities. Uh, we know that they do, but you know, really when you pay, switch a patient or you put a patient in a hybrid for the first time, they, they see that there's a difference. And sometimes it's um, that underlying difference that they never talked about with their doctor because they were afraid they didn't want to have lenses taken away from them. Um, or sometimes it's just, you know, wow, you, you really did make a change and I, I really appreciate it. And, you know, when our patients appreciate what we do, that not only keeps them in the practice, keeps them dedicated to the practice, and you know, it's not like something that they could just get from alternative sources and, and go elsewhere. And um, you know, with the newest uh, generation ID lens that re was re recently launched, you know, we have a bigger, expansive group of patients who we can uh, provide that lens for, and it's much easier to fit because because it is all fit all empirically, so it doesn't take any more time on the doctor's part. And, um, and it's, it's, it's exciting to fit. You know, we've, we looked at what we saw in scleral lens fitting and how the linear shape of the sclera really, um, it's, you know, just because they're wearing so, uh, a non-scleral lens doesn't mean that they don't have that, that same shape. So um, this lens um, really um, has been married to that. And then, you know, it's exciting. We partnered with the Brian Holden Vision Institute 
And so the extended depth of focus optics um, gives our patients who are presbyopic as well as our very young patients um, opportunity to, to thrive in that field as well. And as you know, Didi, you know, you've spent a long time, a lot of expertise going into uh, fitting hybrid lenses, especially on that irregular cornea. And you really, you kind of wrote the book on this and I totally learned a lot from you. I truly did. Um, and uh, I just kind of want to put a how out to all of the consultants because these consultants are really, you know, and um, so it's, it really has a good place for those patients who do have irregular corneas, especially early to moderate keratoconus is really, again, a, a good place for a hybrid contact lens. Well, and that, that goes again for any contact lens, even when you're talking about sclerals or GPs, any sort of specialty lenses, I really think you need to, um, if you have questions, work with your consultants because your consultants are a big part of understanding those designs when it comes to any specialty lens. So what tips would you have for integrating specialty lenses into a practice, either as a new practitioner or as a practitioner that's been in the business for a while and wants to get into fitting specialty lenses? Well, I guess I'm going to say just do it. Embrace it. If this is what you want to do, go for it and, and be fearless. Don't uh, don't be, don't, don't just put yourself in one corner and say, I'm going to be just a scleral lens fitter. And now I'm a specialist because that really isn't, you have to be able to fit corneal GPs. You need to fit all different modalities of multifocal lenses. You need to fit hybrid lenses. You need to fit specialty soft lenses. So if you truly want to be a specialist, you need to embrace all of those different modalities because those are all parts of it. And the reason why is, I mean, it's not fair to your patient if you're not offering them everything that's out there. All other branches of medicine do it, whether they're talking about treatments for cancer or treatments for uh, menopause or different things like that. They're gonna talk about all different options and you can't just pigeonhole every patient into one type of lens modality. So, so just do that. And then don't be, be afraid to grow. I will tell you that I've only been fitting sclerals for about 10 years. I mean, I looked at them 20, 15 and 20 years ago and I jumped back because they, there were a lot of problems associated with them. But then I jumped right back into the pool and I, I wasn't afraid to say just because I'm mature um, that I can't start <laughs> you know, using new toys. And, um, and then I guess with the toys, you gotta have good equipment and that's really helpful for you. Absolutely, I think good equipment is good and, and, and having you know, people around you that, that know what they're doing and how they're doing it and, and how and use your colleagues and things like that are really helpful as well. Yeah. So again, what words of wisdom would you impart on a new optometrist or even a new female optometrist? I know that you're really involved in women of optometry and I'd like you to speak on that for a little bit. Yeah, well, um, as I've always told my, for, my interns, I, I've trained over 175 interns, 75 ophthalmology residents, and my words, when I leave them, I always tell them to be kind. I mean, it's really very important because you never know what your future holds and kindness goes a long way. And it makes somebody just feel good about themselves and about the, you and whatever. Um, be humble. That's another big thing. Uh, it's very important to know what you know and know what you don't know. OK, and because and that will keep you growing throughout your career. So um, be humble and um, able to learn more things. And, you know, technology has really allowed us to do that because, you know, we can learn different matters. Now, we don't have to just attend meetings, uh, webinars and all that. And uh, speaking of that, like, as you mentioned, I have been very much an advocate for women in optometry. Uh, about 20 years ago, we started a group called Women of Vision. Um, I was not one of the founders, but I was one of the presidents. And I guess I'm still acting president of that. And we've um, recently, um, you know, our, our goal was to mentor young women who were becoming optometrists. Um, and now we see that that's the majority, of course. And, um, you know, so make it more, make them more um, apt to be, become specialists and to rise to leadership. And, uh, and whether it be activism or, or an advocate in your, in your community, we really wanted, we wanted to make that a big force. Um, of course, with the uh, Women in Optometry Journal, that got the word out. We got lots of uh, great uh, female doctors out there, well known and becoming leaders. And Women of Vision's goal was to have education 
geared towards the female patient or the female doctor. And we um, had lots of different presentations at different meetings, Academy, AOA, uh, Expo, um, but we uh, recently be began a new group called Global Ophthalmic Woman, which I'm so excited about. Um, this is a, a international group of doctors. There's uh, six of us on the board and we are uh, launching a meeting that was supposed to be this past March, but we had to move it uh, to June. Um, Next year, it's in Tenerife, Spain. So the goal of this meeting is to combine uh, science, uh, mentorship, as well as lifestyle. Fantastic. Yeah, that sounds like a really exciting meeting. Yeah. So yeah, and I, I know you've led many, many women into the business and, and been mentors. You've been a mentor to me and to a lot of others as well. So thank you for that. And I very, very much appreciate it. So let's kind of go back to the first time optometrist. And I know you remember being your being out there the first time and, and you deal with a lot of women that are out there for the first time. What's the one tip that you would give a new practitioner that wants to branch out into the specialty lens business? So that's a great question. So um, fortunately, I've had the opportunity to do that to fourth your optometry students for my entire career. And so I've always said to them, I've tried to figure out what they're passionate about. And I'm like, if you have the opportunity, do a residency, whatever it is, peds, low vision, specialty lenses, you know, do, do a residency if you can. If you can't, join a practice that has what you're really passionate about. And just, even if it means taking less of a salary, but gaining a whole year of ex expertise, go for it. And then, you know, my other big thing is, um, Besides advocacy and joining your state association, uh, join the academy, you know, become a fellow right away. When I graduated, we had to wait five years, but go for it as soon as you can. And then somebody's going to see you and they're going to grab you and they're going to say, you need to be a diplomate in cornea and contact lenses. That's what Stan Yamani did to me yeah. uh, in 2015. Okay. And, and he said, you're going to be a contact lens specialist. I said, okay, I will. <laughs> you know? And, um, and again, that was, uh, although I did do a residency, it was in disease. So this was my other residency. Again, just learning by, you know, doing the case reports. And I, again, I was very early in my career, so I didn't have an ego that was going to get in my way. And so um, it really helped me learn more about what I was wanted to do for the rest of my life than in specialty lenses. And so, um, you know, go for that. I, I really think that's really important. Well, I think, because I work with a lot of residents as well, I think that there's a real tie-in between residents even five years ago and the residents that we see now. Yeah. They, they're just so much more confident. I think a lot of that comes from the educators out there, like yourself, that are out there teaching them to be passionate. Because I specialty contact lenses is a passionate business. And in order to be successful, you have to have that passion. And I think that's one of the biggest pieces for me is being able to, to spot that passion and, and help to grow it within, uh, within residents and with, with doctors out there. Absolutely. You know, it, it's so funny, Dee, Dee, that you say that too, because there are some, you know, there, there are some who we, they know that's what they want. And then there's some who rotate through my clinic and they're just like, oh, I'm scared of this. And they, you know, you, you can just tell that is not where they're going to go. And that's okay. Cause they might be fantastic at glaucoma or peds or something else. And, you know, it's got to be kind of in you, you know, you could, you could grow them, you know, but they've got to have it in them as well. And, and, um, you know, the, the GPLI uh, just had the cornea and contact lens residency uh, weekend, and it was really awesome to see all of them in one spot. And we're, I was just like, wow, this is the future. We've got good people out there. And uh, the academy actually is, uh, we're, we're trying to embrace them earlier on in their career um, to get them to stay. Because we were like, these are the people who are going to make a difference and who are going to give great contact lens. Um, experiences for their patients. So got to grab them early. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so speaking of passion, I want to switch gears a little bit yeah. because I know that you are quite the, quite the chef yeah. and you have a passion for food. So I want you to kind of tell me a little bit about um, your passion and how it kind of works into that passion in back into contact lenses and how they kind of tie together in the artistic piece of it. Yeah. So um, I love to eat. I'm Italian. I'm actually Sicilian. And so eating is, um, I don't live to eat. I eat to live. Okay. <laughs> it's one of those kind of things. Um, and 
you know, when we, you do have a, a stressful career doing things, you need to have something to just kind of have in the back of your mind. And so um, years ago, uh, when I married into my husband's family, they're Scotch-Irish, um, you know, I, they're, they, they're a loving family and love to get together. But, you know, I noticed that the food could be a little pumped up, right? And so um, I had the first Christmas party with this family when we first got married. And it was, you know, over 30 people at it. And my my mom, who, as you know, lives with us, she was like, uh-oh, you made a big mistake. <laughs> she's, gonna, she's like, they're going to love your food. And coming from a Scotch-Irish family, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> and they won't go anywhere else. So, so um yeah, so having I, every year, uh, I have like a set uh, events that I have every year. One is the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Uh, one is a, uh, an Americano Italian uh, a dinner. I do St. Patrick's Day. I do Easter. So I have all the the, the, uh, the typical ones. But my my real passion is when I have a group of friends over who are foodies and who love to pair it with great wines and spirits. And um, just to put a dinner party together is just like my favorite thing in the world. And, you know, when I go to bed, if I'm trying to unwind to get my head off things, you know, I'll say my prayers, of course. And if I, that doesn't put me to sleep, I start planning a menu. And it's just like beginning to end, you know, from the appetizers to the, through the dessert. And, and I, just, I just love doing that. And I've got a party coming up, so <laughs> excited about that. So what are you making for your party? Oh, so this is going to be this is going to be great. So this is the end of the summer. I usually do the, a dinner under the Tuscan sun, but we're going to do a moonlight to to Sicily tomorrow night, I think. And um, we're going to start out with my so during COVID, uh, my husband and I decided we can each buy ourselves gifts. So I, I got a puppy. I got a dog, not a puppy. I got a dog. I, we got a, a foster and my husband got a pizza oven. So I said to him, I said, okay, you can have that pizza oven as long as it does more than make pizza. Mm -hmm. So um, our dinner tomorrow night, will start with a, a white pizza with truffle aioli as well and with scormozza cheese over it. And then we'll also do a mar um, margarita pizza. And then my mother, uh, Nana, will make her sauteed eggplant, which is thinly sliced sauteed. And we put some fresh tomatoes, basil, and tomatoes on and parmesan on it it's just it's so delicate and it just it's really simple and delicious and then um that's I'm the recipe to, i want that's a, so <laughs> so that's so funny Dee. you don't know about sicilians we don't give our <laughs> share i know <laughs> if we give it to you it's gonna be missing something <laughs> oh i know yeah i have a hispanic mother-in-law i know that <laughs> And then we're going to do a grilled octopus um, with uh, fingerling potatoes and some Fresno peppers. And this is, I'm making this for the first time in the pizza oven. So it's going to be interesting. And then I'm going to have um, an ensalada with radicchio, um, green um, olive couscous, and, and uh, infused with in a, a halibut or whatever fresh fish I'm going to find tomorrow, uh, and infused with grapefruit and fennel. And uh, that's that'll be our salad. And then for uh, pasta, it'll be a Sardinian comfort pasta. Uh, we're going to do an orecchetti uh, with some sausage and mushrooms and cream and uh, saffron. And then for our main entree, it will be a fire roasted filet mignon over um, uh, an, a spicy arugula and a little bit of cauliflower gratin. And um, I don't do dessert. I do uh, employ others to bring get, get desserts. So we are going to have a Basque cake um, mm. with a um, some peaches and wine and a special ice cream. I'm going to have to decide when I get to the store tomorrow. So, and so what time should I be there tomorrow? So we're we'll starting at <laughs> six thirty central. <laughs> <laughs> and come casual because we're eating out on the terrace and hoping to do dessert uh, on the beach with a fire. So I don't know how fun. That sounds like that, like just so much fun. Yeah. All right, Louise, thank you so very much for being with us today. I appreciate you so much and have the utmost respect for you uh, in, in the business and as my friend. Oh, I love you, Dee Dee, and I really appreciate you as well. And I hope to have you at my table someday. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And now I'd like to say thanks to ABB for all their support, uh, for supporting uh, DD Talks, the Art of Specialty Lenses. And I'd like to thank all of our guests for being with us today. Um, our broadcast is available on our website at abboptical.com under practitioner resources backslash DD Talks. Please stay tuned for future episodes of DD Talks 
where we sculpt together art and specialty contact lenses.